Stop hoarding. Often very toxic. Science is complicated. It just felt yuck. What do you mean you don't have work-life balance? Get a vasectomy then do. You know in romantic movies when someone's in their room and they hear a tapping on their window? Today we have the most beautiful story of when a guy heard that kind of tapping and it turned out to be Laura Keats. He's gone from dealing with some lockdown loneliness, which we can all relate with at the moment, to making new friends with these birds. That story is coming up. It is so wholesome. Hello, Avani Dice here. We're also going to talk about YouTube announcing it'll block all the anti-vax content. But will it work? Pack. The public is actually more progressive on this than the government and the regulatory bodies are. On Triple J. All right, big news today. MDMA and magic mushrooms are getting closer to being approved to treat mental health issues like PTSD, anxiety and depression. Scientists have been looking into whether that's safe and finding these drugs have positive effects in recovery for some of those conditions. So the drug regulator, the TGA, asked a group of experts to look into it and this afternoon they handed down their findings saying they could be used for therapeutic use but only in really supervised clinical settings, not in party situations unsupervised. I want to know your thoughts. Call in. Have you used MDMA or mushrooms to deal with your mental health? one 36 Sarah Tomevska reports. The first side effect that I had from LSD was, was laughter, and I thought, what, a, what an incredible experience to, to take a drug that results in uncontrollable laughter. <laughs> That's Merlin Faber. Like a lot of people, he first tried drugs when he was in high school. MDMA, weed, then mushrooms and LSD. He describes his and his mates' experiences of psychedelics as therapeutic. I found that people who were not affectionate by their nature or who had suffered traumas uh, early on in their life became much more open. Despite Merlin's positive drug experiences, he did have one that was really, really bad. In 2017, Merlin met a guy at uni who shared his interest in psychedelics. So they sparked a friendship and talked about how to get some drugs online. And then one day, a delivery arrived at Merlin's house. It was basically just, I was asleep, heard a knock on the door, uh, went to sign for a package. I went back to bed thinking that it was just motorcycle parts or something that I had ordered from overseas. But yeah, it wasn't motorcycle parts. It was half a kilo of MDMA. About 10 or 15 minutes later after that, I just hear 20 car doors slamming outside my house and people in the front and the back door knocking on all the windows and yelling my name. And that's when I realised that the Australian Federal Police had become involved in the affairs. Merlin was charged with importing a marketable quantity of a border-controlled drug that carries a maximum penalty of life in prison. Now, Merlin says he wasn't involved in ordering the drugs, but a jury disagreed. And in the end, he was sentenced to four years in jail with a non-parole period of 16 months. What was prison like? It was definitely a significant impact. It's a high-stress environment. There are people in there who are difficult to get along with, I guess. Merlin's recently been released on parole and now he's studying law at uni. But because of his criminal record, he might never become a lawyer. Despite that, he doesn't necessarily regret the experience. I mean, it's galvanised my resolve for advocating for a reassessment in attitudes towards how we treat people, mostly in regards to drugs. And this is a fast-evolving space. Just a few hours ago, a report from an expert independent panel put together by Australia's drug regulator, the TGA, was handed down. The panel found that MDMA and magic mushrooms may show promise for therapeutic use, but only when they're used in really closely supervised clinical settings with intensive professional support. Now, we just have to wait until December for a final decision to be made on whether the drugs will be reclassified from prohibited to controlled. 
which means they could be used to treat mental illnesses. There's research ongoing at the moment looking at uh, psilocybin in the treatment of uh, treatment-resistant depression for obsessive-compulsive disorder, substance use disorders including smoking cessation and alcohol use, cocaine use. Um, it is really a burgeoning area where there's a, there's a lot of research happening at the moment. That's Dr Stephen Bright from Edith Cowan University in WA. He's the Director of Psychedelic Research and he reckons it's only a matter of time before MDMA is used in medicine. MDMA is not a classic psychedelic, but it's probably the one that we're going to see mainstream first because with MDMA earlier this year there was a phase three clinical trial um, published and so we, we're getting data that's sort of beyond promising now. But Dr Bright stresses that using these drugs to self-medicate can be really dangerous. People that have a, a pre-existing mental health condition, adding the drug on top of that without the, the proper psychotherapy is actually quite dangerous and could lead to their mental health condition becoming worse rather than better. Dr Bright thinks regulation is realistically still a long way off. Our politicians and our regulatory boards are not in sync with the public's attitude. And I think the public is actually more progressive on this than the government and the regulatory bodies are. Hack on Triple J. Sarah Tomeska with that story. Let's talk to Professor.